going to talk to you about uh, uh, they'd be slightly lower here in, in the states as, as high as they are. The, the, yeah. um, Ditch Seeker won in two projects, and um, again, both of these were funded by the Institute of uh, Museum and Library Services. Um, so the uh, you can see the title of the, the Ditch Seeker One project was preserving access to our digital future on building an international digital curation curriculum. All right, a mouthful when you were putting on a conference. We couldn't just use that for our first um, international conference we ran in 2007. So Cal and I and our doctoral uh, project manager at that time, uh, John Schaefer, uh, John actually came up with Dig Seeker. So the Dig for digital, C for uh, uh, curation, and C-U-R-R for curriculum. And that's where it comes from. And you know, we were kind of like, eh, I'm not sure we like that name. Yeah. But you know, once you brand something, you have to keep it, right? This is good. And what we also found was good, that nobody knew how to pronounce it. So a lot of people will say ditch cooker or something else. And um, so we put our, our uh, phonetic spelling up. And um, the fact that people try to pronounce it to themselves means they remember the name. So, and there's nothing else with that name when you Google it, so it's good. We decided it was actually a good name. So, um, this was, I ran from July 1st, 2006 through uh, the end of December 2009. Carolyn Hank, uh, who is one of our doctoral alums now, who is at the University of Tennessee at Knoxville, and will be here um, next weekend for the uh, for the closing Ditch Seeker 2 meeting, which will be a fabulous meeting of uh, educators, uh, was just so instrumental in uh, the hard work of that project. And we had partners um, in the National Archives uh, in this project. So this was really what, we put this grant in in 2005 that was funded in in uh, June of 2006, and we started in uh, uh, July. And the very first thing we did was to go to Nancy McGovern and Ann Kenny's workshop in um, at Cornell, uh, which was the second year they did it, maybe I think. And um, we learned a lot from that. And John John came with us as well. Uh, this is really the project that set us at UNC off in this direction. And I would attribute all of the, the good things that have come afterwards and all of the development actually to this project. Uh, the curriculum, to prepare students uh, for digital curation, a wide variety of organizations. We were looking at, in, in this case, for um, master's level students. Um, so we created a framework, and that is in uh, the matrix that I'll talk a little bit about. Uh, uh, we developed course modules, uh, which of course quickly get out of date. So I don't think those are necessarily the things that you share around <coughs> unless you constantly uh, do that. Um, we developed courses here at SILS. Uh, we put in some uh, experiential components, and we did um, some international guest speakers some in person when they came here for the two conferences, but also uh, remotely into our classes. I taught a doctoral seminar that was uh, remote uh, with uh, University of Glasgow at that time. Um, Seamus Rossity and Anderson were on the other end, and, and uh, they sometimes had guest speakers, so it was like two levels of remoteness <laughs> that we were able to pull in. Uh, we had two international symposia in 2007 and 2009. Uh, these each brought in about 270 people, which I think is reflective of, if nothing else, uh, because we did not particularly have a reputation in the, in the uh, wide world in this area in 2007. Uh, these were not in a series. They were not something like IPRES that's been known for like eight years now. This was. Now, the 2007, it was a one-off conference. We had two, 270 people attended that. That is so reflective of the need. Uh, and, and we were framing this, what, did, what do digital curators uh, do and what do they need to know? 
And we just, we had, because of IMLS funding, we were able to bring in a fabulous group of people. We had a wonderful um, advisory board with several people from Europe and um, New Zealand even. So we were able to fund those people to come here. So they have great um, speakers. And uh, then we had um, Carolina Digital Curation Fellowship Program. We uh, supported five master's students, um, and who was at least at least two that I know of out of the five have gone off to fame and fortune, or at least fame in the digital preservation areas of Waterbury. So the matrix of digital curation knowledge and competencies is a tool for thinking about, planning for, identifying, and organizing material to cover curriculum. Uh, and I think through the years since we devised this, and this was mostly, uh, it was kind of my idea that we needed to have some sort of matrix framework. And then Cal went to work filling this thing out, um, just like a, a demon who was possessed with filling this in. You worked really hard on that, Gail. Uh, I think the structure and I think a lot of the content to that will remain constant. I think what you actually, how you implement that in classrooms and various types of education and how this is applied will change as the technology and, and the environment change. Uh, so it helps us to address a fundamental issue. All digital curation students should get some aspects of the curriculum but other aspects will, will only be necessary for uh, students planning to work in particular types of uh, institutions or in particular jobs. So kind of a core and then specialization now. And I think you can see that all the way uh, into the DAX curriculum uh, and those levels of what was considered core and then more specialized. Six uh, matrix dimensions mandates, values, and principles, so kind of the ethics and the values behind digital curation. Professional, disciplinary, organizational context. Uh, we did not use the, the um, traditional National Archives life cycle model. We, used, we really have built this more in a continuum uh, idea where the, um, when we look at um, digital content, we're concerned with it over its lifespan, uh, recognize that it kind of can morph back and forth between active and secondary and, and uh, reusability through its lifespan. Um, the type of resource that you're looking at, whether it's uh, text or audiovisual or whatever. Uh, particular functions and skills that you need to learn and know, and what is prerequisite knowledge. And I think if you, uh, if you go on, online to our website, the list of functions and skills is pretty uh, expensive. Okay. Dig Seeker 2 uh, extended that international digital operation curriculum to doctoral students and practitioners. So the title of that project is uh, uh, exactly reflective of what we've done and just finishing up to do. This was also funded by IMLS Laura Bush Fund. Um, and here we had uh, National Archives again, and first University of uh, Glasgow, and then um, University of Toronto as uh, a partner. And uh, this is running through the end of this month. Ditch Seeker will live on, but not with final less funding, apparently. <laughs> um, so the original activities, um, were six PhD fellowships. It's five students now. We've had students who kind of uh, cycled in and out of the funding because they may have decided that their research uh, focus changed. Um, so we've actually had, we've touched, I think, 10 doctoral students with the funding overall. Uh, we have built the Digital Curation Exchange, which you'll see this afternoon. Uh, thank you, Heather Bozeman, for an awesome amount of work on that. Uh, we have had uh, professional institutes, so the grant called for three of them in 9, 10, and 11. And uh, we did one last year with no support from IMLS on just uh, its own bottom, and we're doing that again this May. Uh, we send people who register some reading material ahead of time. We have the week in May. We follow up 
try to um, uh, call them and have set calls and whatnot, and, and we swear we're going to be better at that uh, because we're going to set up those appointments before they leave this year. Um, because if it's in our date book, we will do it. Uh, the fifth one will be held in May 12th through 17th this year. So far, we've had about 125 participants. And last year, the uh, Royal Danish Royal Library in Copenhagen asked us to go. So it was myself and Cal and Nancy McGovern and Carolyn Hank went to Denmark. And uh, along with four doctoral students. Four doctoral students? Alex, four doctoral students. Yes. And uh, talked to workshop there, which was a lovely experience for us and I think a good experience for them. We went back in January to follow up after the, because uh, we were in Amsterdam for the International Digital Duration Conference. And um, I think they really, because, and maybe more so than in some cases, this was the first time when we had like, people all from just two institutions, it was the State Library and the National Library. And uh, I think there was a lot of synergy because they were working together on these things. Uh, so in uh, January, we have people come back, uh, the, the people who come to Chapel Hill in May, and uh, we've been doing a uh, public symposia. In 2010, we did one called Engaging Communities for the Curation of Digital Products of Scholarly Endeavors. And then in 2011 and 12, uh, we did Curate Year uh, that was partially supported with um, funds from uh, Melvin's Support of Bit Curator Project. So their advisory board came and we had some awesome speakers about uh, tools. And um, PhD seminar series. Uh, last year we held one at the Archival Educators Research Institute, Erie. And this year we're going to hold one where we bring in 20 doctoral students in digital curation from across the country, Canada, and Europe. Uh, next uh, Sunday, St. Um, Patrick's Day. I have the outfit for it already. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Digital Curation Exchange, and we will see some of the content on that this afternoon. Uh, it's a Drupal site that uh, Heather built from the ground up. And uh, I think this is my last slide. This is the uh, uh, digital curation programs that uh, SILS is now offering. And again, none of these, none of these existed when we got the first I in one spring. So all of this uh, really stems from that, that activity. Um, so concentration in archives and records management came online in 2008. Uh, certificate in digital curation, I think 2010, 10, 11. The certificate, maybe it was 11. 11. Uh, we have a dual degree. You can either do an MS uh, information science or library science with the School of Government's uh, Masters of Public Administration program, and that's been funded. We, we had that dual degree. We kind of sipped it up, and we have these wonderful internships funded by uh, Institute from Mobile. Yeah, I'm a last. Um, to support people who are going to go out and be digital curators in the government sector. And boy, do we need those people. And uh, about 10 PhD students, presently, uh, many of whom have been funded by um, uh, Digital Seeker 2 at some point, and uh, a brand new, uh, offering a first time starting this summer, Postmaster Certificate in Data Curation. That's the 10 course one, two, course, two courses here. Cal and I are working, after we do the Digital Seeker Institute for a week, we're going to teach. Um, you, have, you have the morning shift, I have the afternoon shift, I think, last two weeks of May. So hopefully we'll get a good cohort for that, and then the rest of those courses are going to be online, and then uh, we have the Digital Seeker Professional Institute. So that kind of rounds out, and then I would say that all really does trace back to that first. Um, I'm not good.